If you have been graced with a beta like this, you know just how crappy the headlight is. And I am very sick of it, but I'm not willing to spend the like 400-ish dollars on a Baja Designs light. So using a rigid light that I had sitting around, we're going to replace that. And so I'll be 3D modeling the design and then 3D printing it. I'm not going to dive into the specifics of CAD in this video, but I'll kind of walk you through the process and show you how I did it. So to start off, I pulled the headlight bezel off of the bike and just started taking measurements. There's uh, the opening where the headlight sat that I need to get modeled up. And then there's also three thread bosses that I'm planning on attaching to. So just getting starting with the thread bosses there, got them modeled up uh, just roughly where they are. I just used little uh, posts modeled up to, to show those locations and then I'll build the uh, bezel design off of that. Now I'm throwing in a uh, profile of, of that opening that I need to follow. Um, I'm trying to get just rough dimensions here. The goal for this is to just kind of get a starting point, get it bolted in and see what I can change because then I have a good thing to actually measure off of because I can say well, the thing that I printed is, you know, 102 thou away from where it needs to be. So I know the dimension of that thing in CAD, that the whole thing is drawn up in the CAD space. So it's easier to move that exactly 102 thou because I have something to reference. I hope that makes sense. Um, so just going through and making a design that can fit that shape. I added a little cutout for the size of that light. And now I'm throwing in the little bracket connections that hook onto those bosses. So we got an initial model here. I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, obviously, this isn't going to be super accurate. This is just an initial way to get something for us to throw in there and measure. But um, there's a lot of weird angles going on. So I'm sure there's going to be some, some weird stuff. That's about what the opening should look like right there. Um, not exact, but um, yeah, I think we'll throw this in there. Right now we don't have any mounts to hold this light in here. It'll go in this direction like that. Yeah, let's take it out this way. Um, I think we'd be getting ahead of ourselves a little bit to, to do all those mounts right now. I think the first thing I'm going to do is print just this half because I mean, both sides are identical. That's why I modeled this one side and entered it. Um, I think it's worth just printing this. This would be easier to print anyways. And then we can get that fitted in there. And that should tell us everything that we need to know about how this is going to fit along this face and interfere and how it's going to interface with these. And, and then we can adjust it to be just right before we print the whole thing. And then that will give me a better idea of how I'm going to mount the actual light. If I want it to mount to the same bezel or if I want to mount it to, there's a spot on the triple clamp that I could build a mount off of that I think would work well. Um, I think after getting this, this half printed and placed in there, I'll be able to tell a little better what the game plan will be. So we're going to go ahead and get this printing and then check this thing out. So getting that cut up in Prusa Slicer, like I said, I'm just doing the one half because that should tell me everything that I need to know. The other half is exactly the same as this side. So I'm just printing it in PLA just super quickly to see about what it looks like in the headlight bezel. Um, I I did probably more supports than I needed. Uh, made it kind of annoying to take off all the pieces. I was having some print stability issues, so I kind of went a little overboard on like adding the whole raft and everything. I guess is it? I think the brim is what they call it on this. Um, but same diff. It worked out good. So we'll throw that in the headlight bezel and see how well it works. Um, got it here. Um, those are just self-tapping like plastite screws that they're using on this. I don't think they're plastite brand, but same thing. I actually recorded all this with sound and my mic wasn't working, of course. But it actually turned out pretty dang close to what I want. I'm happy with the fit. 
I, I want to make a few tweaks, like my, my fillets in the corners weren't quite as big as they should be, and that top edge had a lot more radius to it than I thought it did. Um, actually, the bottom too, so I, I'm going to adjust those surfaces a little bit, get them straightened out. And now I'm just fitting it up to the bike to see about where the headlight sits. This is mainly just so that I can build the mount. Uh, there's a little, that spot I'm pointing at right there is a little plastic piece that bolts the triple clamp that held the brake line in place. Um, removing that because I already broke off that thing anyways. Uh, I don't think it's really necessary because the headlight bezel does the same thing. So I'm going to make this to bolt into the same spot and hold my light. That's what I'm designing right here. Um, just making a quick little mount that can hold the light in place and then it's separate from the bezel. So I like that just because uh, that's that triple clamp is obviously a lot stronger than the headlight bezel that's plastic. So um, it's going to hold that light a lot stronger in place. And then all that the bezel is holding is just that little cover to stop like the air from getting in and stuff. Uh, I think that seemed like a good way to do it. I, I'm sure there's a easier way to bolt it together, but I think it turned out working really good anyways. Um, so now I'm gonna go through and make the edits here. This is that new profile that I was able to measure off of the new one to get that better radius that fits it a lot nicer and prettier. I did change the position of that hole a little bit just so that it wasn't, um, just to make it line up a little bit better. And then now I'm going through and I'm adding some thickness to everything just because, I mean, it's just a printed part. It can be as thick as I want it to be. I'm not worried about injection molding tolerances or anything. So, and now I'm adding some curve here to that bottom section to kind of fill that gap. And I just made it a little bit extra thick right there because like I said, like thickness doesn't matter. Okay, we got some nice prints made on the P1S at the office. Printed them out of ABS. Um, Turned out just super slick. I really like the prints that come off of those printers. This was obviously really hard to print um, But it turned out good for how hard it was to print um, We so I did a test print with this and fit it up and um, Kind of had to rush this just because of scheduling had of when I was going into the office and stuff I don't go in very often so this fits pretty good. It's not a perfect fit still. It's it's uh, it's pretty dang good for for me just doing quick. So I like that. We're going to get this thing screwed on, and then um, we'll go ahead and bolt onto the bike and see how well this lines up with our headlight. We, we might have to do some spacing to get it right. I left a big slot in there. I'll show how that works here in a second. Actually tightening that down with the screws did kind of suck it in a little bit better if you look up in those top corners there. Actually turned out pretty sweet. The way that this works is we have a nylock nut that just slides into there, has a little slot and that holds it in place. And then this bolts through this bracket. Um, this bolt will go down like this into that nut, tighten down, and then there is another little slot down in there so that the bolt can go through it without bottoming into the plastic. Um, seemed to work really well. Got plenty of room for beef in the 3D printed part, um, which is nice because you know you never know how well they're going to hold up. ABS is pretty strong and, and weather resistant, but um, at the end of the day, it's still a 3D printed part and you can only get so good. So. We'll uh, go throw it on the bike and see how it looks. Okay, we're back out here in my super messy garage. Um, I don't even care. Family's been cycling through sicknesses for like a month and a half, it feels like. So it's just everything's a mess around here. Let's see if we can get this thing bolted on. So this spot right here there, there was a little bracket that was right here and it held a little thing that came off to hold the brake line in place that already broke off a while ago it's not a big deal because the headlight bezel also has something to hold it on um, so I don't really miss that and I think the other thing that was holding on was the horn which rattled off and fell off on its own so uh, basically that bracket was useless anyways if yours is not then you might not want to 
go and replace it with this. But if you won't miss that kind of useless bracket thing, and you won't miss your horn that's already rattled off, or you don't care about a horn anyways, then eh, it won't be a problem. Pull this on. There's a bunch of wiring and crap that you kind of have to push out of the way a little. Let's check out this fit. Um, just kind of push that cable out of the way for now. Um, this is that spot that that brake line goes in. We'll be sneaking that through when we do the final assembly here, but I'm not going to worry about it yet. Get that pushed through there. How's this side look? Yeah, that one's ready. Okay. So alignment looks pretty decent. Can that? Holy Helen, that was, that's too dang good. Dude, first try. I don't have to modify a thing. That looks perfect. And that'll, that'll bolt right up. So it looks like the way to do this I'll just uh, get it loose like it is right now. And then I can sneak in Allen wrenches to tighten up the, the bolts into the light there. And then I can sneak in a wrench over here, to tighten up that bolt and it'll be set, good to go. Um, still gotta figure out wiring. I haven't even looked into it yet. I'll pull up the wiring diagram and see what I need to wire in. Should be pretty simple. I just uh, started the bike, tested, found we just got this one's the ground, and then each one of these has power in it when the uh, switch is on one or the other. So I'm just going to hook it to one of them. I don't think it matters which one. So here we are. Um, should be able to just plug that into there. And we'll plug this in here. And now that should work. Just need to uh, put that up in here. Now this doesn't move independently at all, so shouldn't have any issues with it just kind of being shoved into place here. So I think that wraps it up. This light works great. It's ready to go on a ride to Green River. Well, I tested this thing out down in Green River for a few days. Uh, 10 miles into the first day, I had a really gnarly wreck and fractured a vertebrae and did some sort of bone damage to my knee and wrist also. Waiting to hear back on all three of those things on the extent of the damage, but finished out the other 31 miles that day with a broken back and then woke up the next day, pounded a bunch of drugs and continued on the rides. I did about 75 more miles after that. I'll be taking it easy for the next little while, but I should still be able to make some headway on the electric bike build. So watch out for that, I guess. And I didn't dive much into the CAD on this one. I did a little bit on the fork tool video. Um, I can do it even more than that if you're interested in that kind of thing. CAD is my number one thing that I do, I guess. So uh, if I have plenty of information to share on that front if you're interested. So um, I'd be happy to share more on that or 3D printing or just any of these fun projects that I, I do, these little simple do-it-quick projects. Obviously, I mean simple and quick compared to a full electric dirt bike build like we are also doing. So let me know if you like it. Uh, watch out for other videos like this and we'll catch you on the next one.